Hello again. Somebody was asking me about the EEV blog microcurrent gold. It's basically an amplifier with a shunt and they use that to reduce the burden voltage when you're making low current measurements with a multimeter. I thought it'd be interesting just to measure the burden voltage at something reasonable using all these meters. So you can see I have them all set up in series. They're currently attached to my fluke reference. So what I've done is I placed a series resistor in line with them and I've adjusted that value to give me roughly one microamp of current. Unfortunately, I've got to zoom out pretty far to get all these meters in the picture. All the meters are reading roughly a microamp. So this meter's been on for about a half an hour now. This is my 3468A, and I'm going to use it to just measure the voltage drop across each one of these meters, and we'll go ahead and write that down. The meters from left to right are basically the highest to the least costly. We'll start with this uh, TPI-1942, and it looks like it's about 94 microvolts. And the Unity-181, about 39 microvolts. It's pretty amazing, this 181 is about half the voltage drop of this TPI. So let's see what our Bryman is. Looks like about 98 microvolts. And Dave's little Bryman is... About 106 microvolts so far. That's the worst of the group. Oh, look at this with our semimeter. Uh, 493 microvolts. Really bad on this one. Let's go down to the next. So about 50 microvolts. In the UT61E, 987, and our Free Harbor Freight Meter, just as bad, 987. All right, so from left to right, you can see 94 microvolts for the TPI, the Unity 181, you can see it's about 40 microvolts, the BM869S, about 98. 106 for the BM235, the sum meter about 493, the AM530 about 50, and then the UT61E is about 987, and 987 as well for the Harbor Freight meter. Again, these are the least expensive meters of the whole group, so I kind of expect these would have the highest burden voltage. Let's just try taking it down a little bit further in current. So let's just see if this changes the drop. So it's definitely not rescaled on this one, uh, 25, 26, if we calculate out the shunt value for the TPI-194, uh, it looks like this is roughly 100 ohms, looks like the UT-181A is about a 50 ohm resistor, again this would be 100, 100, this is about 500, again 50 ohms, and the two on the end about 1k ohm. It's interesting that these two meters, the Ampro BM 530 and this UT181A, use the lowest value shunt resistors. This is with roughly 100 nanoamps being applied. Again, this is a manual ranging meter, and the lowest range is uh, 200 microamps for this. So it looks like about 12 microvolts, so it doesn't look like that switched. Uh, the 181 looks like about 5 microvolts or so, so that has not switched. The Bryman, about uh, 11 microvolts, 12, that hasn't switched. The BM235. About 17 microvolts. Looks like the semimeter is about 41, 42 microvolts. And the Ampro AM530 looks like about 2 microvolts. Our UT61E about 90 microvolts. And the Free Harbor Freight Meter. Looks like, again, about 90 microvolts. Doesn't look like any of the meters actually change the value of the shunt that they're using. 
Of course the Harbor Freight Meter being again manual range it's not going to automatically select. So again now I kind of wonder could we take this UT61E and modify it to give us the least amount of burden voltage of the meters up here? Maybe. Again the problem with the chipsets that they've used in this meter it doesn't appear that you can actually change the gain of the amplifier for the shunts that you've selected. So if I wanted to do that I would actually have to add an external op amp right on the circuit board maybe just glue it down and then jump her to it and it'd be a fair amount of work to do it well, I think that's going to be it hopefully it's given you some idea at least looking at the meters that I've accumulated from my test you know again these being the ones that have actually survived or I've modified them to survive should give you some idea of the cost and what the performance is it does show you basically when you start looking at these lower end meters the burden voltage definitely goes up you know, to be honest, I really do like this 181A. It's just kind of a shame that the circuit board layout was so poor that it couldn't even handle a simple ESD event. When you look at the temperature stability, the accuracy, this meter actually does very well. It certainly has the most features of all the meters that I've shown you here. Till the next meter. Later.